Hey everyone, this is Corey with Lily North America. I'm back with another Cow Talk with Corey. This time we're with Jeff uh, Bramer of Bramer's Pine Ridge Farms here in Lake City, Minnesota. Um, this farm actually is really brand new. And so uh, three weeks into this project, can you talk about what we have going on here um, and, and how you painted your barn red with Lily? Well, we, we have a totally robotic barn. Put six robots in, five manure collectors, two vectors. MFRs and a brand new steel barn, cross vent barn. Cross vent barn, and so um, you know, robotics isn't something completely new for you, if, uh, if I'm correct. And so, can you talk about what you came from to now uh, this barn here? In 2010, we put three Laley robots in, retrofitted in our old barn. Okay. Yeah, um, worked out great, and we got three boys. And growing into the farm and we wanted to expand and it's either sell the cows or move forward and milk more cows. Yeah, exactly. So building this for the future, right? Perfect. So um, I know we're here in your office, which is pretty nice right now if you ask me, uh, but how about we go check out uh, the barn and start walking around talking products? We can. Perfect. Let's head this way. All right, so we didn't make it too far into the barn here um, before taking a hard right turn. Uh, so what what is this room we're standing in? I know I've been on a lot of robotic dairies, but this is a room I haven't seen yet. This is called the hoof trimming room. Trimming room, okay. So then how does that work? Yeah, we, uh, we bring about 20 to 25 cows in this area here. Okay. And then we can run them down this lane on this side. The hoof trimmer can back his shoot in, parks his shoot there on the end. Cow can make the corner, go right in the hoof trimming chute. When yeah. she's done, she can walk out the front and go back down this lane. That way we can keep the cows separate from the ones that have been done and the ones that haven't been done. And then we got a couple gates out there. We can swing and run them right back into the cow. And so cows. what was your reasoning for wanting this room here? I didn't want it close to the robots. Okay. Otherwise it would interfere with the yeah. visits. You know. Seeing as we already had robots before yeah. and we used to hoof trim close to one of the robots, it really affected it's the awesome. cow's visits. Yeah. All right, and so now it looks like it's been used once. What, how did the hoof trimmer give up for a review of this room and this setup? Hoof trimmer said he'd come back anytime. He loved it. <laughs> Can't beat the positive reviews, yeah. right? All right, well, we'll head out this way and keep going. All right, so I know we got the vector moving along behind us down there in the feed alley. Uh, can you just talk to me a little bit about the overall layout of this barn? Um, I know you mentioned earlier the cross vent, but a couple more specs on what's going on here. The cows back in this corner are the far off dry cows. Far off, okay. And then on the opposite side of the barn is our close up cows where they're going to have their calves. Okay. And then right behind, we got three robot rooms, and right on the back side, is some sort stalls for the robots can sort the cows for like breeding, yeah, for preg check, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the barn is for all milk cows. Okay. So, and so then, what is this like dimensions of this building as a whole here? The width is 140 feet wide, and okay. the length is about 420 feet long. 420 feet. All right. I know that was three weeks in. That was a little bit of a test there yeah. for you, but all right. All right. Well, let's keep walking down then and start taking more of a look. standing right next to the fans, but we still can hear the collector moving along behind us. Uh, Jeff, you said you have five collectors, is yes. that correct? All right, and so how is that different, uh, having collectors in this barn to uh, your other barn that you came from? In our old barn, we had alley scrapers. Okay. And really didn't like the cows stepping on the chains and stepping on the scrapers, and we yeah. wanted something different. And the few barns we went and toured, they had manure collectors, and I really liked how we, what we saw, and that's why we went with manure, manure collectors. Okay, and so three weeks in, how, how have they been working so far? Um, what are some of the tweaks that you've been working out with? It's working great, just a little bit of knowing how much water to spray down. Yep. And uh, as long as you keep the eyes clean, they seem to work really well. Okay. And in three weeks, I think we've only had one get lost. Okay, so, okay. You can bring it back home. We had to bring bit. it back yeah. home with our phone and put it on the charger. Yeah, perfect. Working right. great. I see it's moving right along 
Um, the bed is there. The cows don't seem to mind it. Have you did they catch on to the, the collector really quick? They catch on really quick. I was surprised. They they don't even bother. I mean, it bumps up against them, and they'll just kind of look at it like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, can you talk to me about your decision of putting that in? The goal is to hopefully the heifers get a taste of the pellets that they're going to be receiving in the robots. Okay. And you know, maybe train them to the robots a little quicker. Yeah. And then we can also ramp them up so they're ready when they calve in. They, their feed protocol is all ramped up so they can go right onto the milk cow ration. Yeah. All right. So, and what I'm hearing, you know, introducing them to the pellet a little bit and then showing them, you know, if you, as you're walking in here, you can get a little bit um, of a snack while you're in there. So when you're ready for the robot, you can kind of be ready for a little snack right away, right? It was an afterthought once we started building, but I think it worked out pretty well where we put it. Awesome. All right. Well, let's go look at the vector. I see it's moving on its way now. We 
we're standing here with the kitchen behind us. You have two MFRs running around feeding um, all throughout your barn. Talk to me about the decision to put in automatic feeding into your barn um, and, and why you went that route. In our old barn, we fed with upright silos. So okay, all right. <laughs> I spent a lot of time feeding. Yep. And I really wanted the vector system. Okay. Besides the fact that the farms we vis visited that had the vector systems, that it really helped with their components. Yep. And with the robots, I think it's really huge because you don't dump all your feet at once. You right. got cows eating, you got cows milking, you got cows laying down. Yeah. I think in the long run, I think it's really beneficial. Well, and like you were talking about earlier with the, you know, talking about breaking up the different feed fences, you know, you're feeding to need and you can segment it out, right. you know, it's, um, so really keeping fresh cow, uh, feed up for the cows all the time. Um, so can you talk to me just a little bit about how this system works? So, you know, you have the grabber running around, yep. Um, you just fill in your feedstuffs here uh, and you tell what to do or how does that work? Right now it's it's sectioned up different bays. Okay. So we got corn silage here, we got far off dry cow haylage there, and then milk cow haylage on the other side. And then we feed a little bit of straw. And then we have uh, dry corn in a bulk bin plus our base mix is in a bulk bin which comes in with a flex auger. Okay. But in the winter time we should be able to fill this up. It yep. should last three days if there's going to get really cold or yeah. the cold yep. coming. Yeah, yep. fill it up and let it go. And so I know this, uh, we said two MFRs, so this one behind us right now is getting filled up. It, it, the other one, is that running around? The other filled. one's actually running around either pushing up feed or, or dumping feed. Okay. And when that one comes back, it'll come into a charger over here. Okay. And then when this one gets done mixing, that one will leave. And then this one will back up and come over here and fill. To get filled. So there's only one fill spot, but there's two chargers. Okay. All right, so it's once again, same question, three weeks in. How have you liked this system so far? How have you seen the difference in, in say, your daily chores? <laughs> I, I really like it. The, yeah. the only phone call I get is when I don't put enough feed See. in the feed kitchen. All right, yeah, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. That's it. That's probably not the worst phone call, right, no. either. All right, sweet. All right, so Jeff, thank you again for kind of walking us through uh, Braver's Pine Ridge Farms here. You know, in, in closing, right, we've been, you've been up and operating for three weeks in this barn. But this isn't your first rodeo, you know, with automation. So if someone comes to you and is pursuing automation, what would be your main thing, you know, that you want to leave them with as a take-home? Uh, it gives you a little bit of flexibility in your time.